Welcome back to another video guys. Today we are going to be taking a look at the Slash Epiphone versus the Slash Gibson both in Vermilion Burst. And I have the wall decorated accordingly, half Epiphone and half Gibson. All right, so on the Epiphone, let's open this baby up. Looks pretty good, first impressions. And let's open up the Gibson case. And of course, just as uh, you would expect, uh, that top on the Gibson is just stunning. All right, case candy wise, on the Epiphone, you've got the basic Epiphone bumper sticker that's uh, been coming with the uh, new Epiphone guitars for quite a long time now. A small informational card. Epiphone branded strap locks key to the case and uh, just a couple generic print offs here nothing special Epiphone branded little pull tab on the compartment there nice red plush case interior and moving on to the Gibson uh, of course uh, the case candy you get with the Gibson pretty much puts Epiphone and a lot of brands for that matter to shame Everything comes in this uh, black Gibson branded little plastic baggie. You've got the polishing cloth, uh, the Gibson multi-tool, Grover, strap locks, baby photo, the checklist card, the Gibson owner's manual, some uh, signature slash picks, and your warranty pamphlet. And the uh, AAA Flame solid maple cap uh, on the Gibson models. Just stunning. Really nice. Way better looking than what you get on the Epiphones. Of course, at the price point, that is to be expected. Now, looking at the top of the Epiphone model, the AAA flamed veneer, you know, it really doesn't look that bad. Uh, for an Epiphone, I'd say it's, it's uh, about what you would expect to get. And looking at the Gibson, you know, there's some really nice depth to the flames on that uh, maple top. I really love the side view on this guitar. And get a glance, both of them side by side standing up. Really nice, very impressed. Uh, with the Epiphone for what it is. Great guitar so far. Get another look at this uh, top here. See if we can kind of go at uh, some angles. See if we can see some movement in this uh, the figured veneer top here. A little bit. Looks like the uh, the base of the top of the guitar is looking like the best part of the veneer. Yeah, Moving on up to the neck and the fretboard here. Looks like during buffing, the buffing wheel got onto the corner of the uh, fingerboard there and kind of filed it down a little bit. So not too thrilled to see that. Really nice color on the Indian Laurel board here. Uh, nice dark tone. Uh, we're probably going to uh, brighten that up a little bit when I do the conditioning a little bit later in the video. And neck check. And this is straight from the box as I unpacked it. I have not done any kind of setup or anything, chain strings, not a thing on this guitar. So as we see here, the neck is pretty straight, just about dead on. There is a little bit of space, uh, as we can see here, towards the, the middle of the fretboard. All right, and side by side, looking at the tops of these. Again, the Gibson just killer top love the top on this i've seen some that look uh, even better than this one uh, and also some out there that you know not so much uh, a little bit more closer to what you get on the epiphone but uh, for this example i'm very happy with this gibson and the color tone a little bit darker of a, a red tint on the epiphone uh, really stands out in some of the lighting Looking at the bridge, comparing the hardware on the two guitars, if you're not familiar with Gibson's or Epiphones, the, uh, the Epiphones come with the larger metric posts, whereas the Gibson ABR1 bridge has the smaller size uh, M4 studs. 
tailpiece they look the same basically but again uh, they are not the same there is really not a single part on the guitar other than the actual tailpiece itself that could be interchangeable from one guitar to the other now the volume and tone knobs on the Gibson the pointer knobs are pretty much dead on on their accuracy I see a little bit of uh, a white bubbling in on the tin on uh, that tone knob there and on the Epiphone uh, they're pretty well uh, matched with the thumb bleeder pointers on the tens but yeah a little bit off on a few now on these pickups so these Gibson pickups here are Gibson version of the uh, Seymour Duncan Alnico 2 Pro slash signature models and the specs on the Epiphone version tell us that these are Pro Bucker custom pickups The switch itself really nice and crisp real smooth um, transition on the three-way toggle switch on the Gibson not so much on the Epiphone as that is very noisy very stiff um, in between the three selector positions and looking at the neck binding of course we have the fret in nibs where the binding goes over the ends of the frets. On the Epiphone, no fret nibs uh, over the ends of the fret ends. So that's uh, a spec that you're not ever going to get at this price point with Epiphone. Uh, if that is ever something that they do in the future, you can, of course, expect uh, the price to be adjusted accordingly for that uh, but really probably would never expect that uh, to be in the lineup strap buttons on the epiphone they have the uh, felt bumper cushions in between the strap button and the body which i really don't care for uh, i'm not even sure why those are on there gibson does not do that and moving to the backs of the bodies a Gibson you have uh, a two-piece mahogany body and on the Epiphone uh, surprisingly where we are accustomed to seeing just a veneer covering anywhere from three four five pieces of wood this is actually also a very nice figured two-piece mahogany body as well so well done on that spec Epiphone uh, in this particular um, guitar as we see here in the back really nice uh, rolling flames there um, just some waves going across uh, the back of this body really digging that on the neck you have the heel joint at the bottom and of course you also have the scarf joint at the top which actually makes the neck a little bit stronger than just a one piece like uh, the Gibson is a one-piece mahogany neck with no heel joint and no scarf joint and let's go ahead and get these strings off here All right, hardware check we have the Epiphone branded uh, Loctone series uh, tailpiece and as well as the Loctone Epiphone branded uh, ABR bridge. Gibson version has the lightweight aluminum tailpiece. Bridge is the Gibson branded ABR1. And the neck pickup is Epiphone Pro Bucker Custom um, pickup, which is uh, supposed to be uh, as close as Epiphone can get to the Gibson version pickups which is as, as close to Gibson can get to the Seymour Duncan uh, Anical 2 Pro pickups uh, slash signatures so it's too bad uh, a shame that uh, they, they couldn't just put the Seymour Duncan slash Anical 2 Pro pickups in here you know for what you pay for this guitar they're currently at $9.99 uh, for these not to come with um, some Gibson or 
Seymour Duncan pickups and not to have a COA, in my opinion, it, it, you know, Epphone, they're really missing out. So, um, and I'm sure at the, uh, the price breakdown on the sales of these, because uh, the percentage of these, each one of these goes to slash, you know, who knows what kind of uh, deals they have to make on the back end, uh, contract and price wise. So, um, but really should have done some non Epiphone pickups and a, a nice COA booklet. And I think that really would have helped these sell because I have not seen them sold out at any retailer yet since they have come out. And the bridge pickup. Again, Epiphone USA Pro Bucker Custom Pickup. And on the Gibson Slash model, the neck pickup, uh, this is a 2020 uh, year model guitar. So when they came out in 2020, they were called Rhythm Slash Bucker and Lead Slash Bucker pickups. Now they just say uh, Custom Bucker. So back on the Epiphone Slash model, the pickup mounting ring screws, uh, these look to be identical, if not the exact same screws that uh, what is used on Gibson models. Now these screws are um, used on pretty much most of the new Inspired by Gibson Epiphone lineup guitars that I've seen and that I have. And looking in the back plate of the toggle switch on the Epiphone, everything looks pretty basic back here. Cutouts are clean and centered, and the three screw holes, uh, none of them run off over the edge. And now for the pots and caps cavity, let's look under here. Pretty clean, actually, for an Epiphone. Uh, I don't really see too much uh, as far as uh, sawdust and debris back here. We have the orange drop capacitors. And the pretty standard uh, wiring uh, adapter clips in here. So, I mean, you can easily change out these pickups to other Epiphone pickups. Uh, or you'll have to, uh, you can switch out to other pickups easily. You'll just have to solder the leads directly to the pots, bypassing these plugs. All looks pretty standard and uh, clean. And moving on to the back of the large cavity on the back of the Gibson. I can get this blade off. These are much better fitting back plates on the Gibsons than the Epiphones. All right, and we also have the orange drop capacitors back here, all hand wired electronics. You have the Gibson branded 500K pots, which is CTS 500K equivalent. And everything looks real nice, tidy, and clean back here. All right, let's remove the three screws on the truss rod cover on the Epiphone and uh, just take a look under here, see what we see. All looks pretty typical for your Epiphone. They have some kind of uh, odd looking marking lines in here. I don't, I don't know what that is. There's usually some kind of uh, cutout or markings right there. All right, so time to hydrate and condition this laurel board. And there you have it, halfway up the board. You can really see the difference uh, that the uh, Dunlop conditioning oil does uh, just in the color alone, uh, night and day differences before. Now, of course, after this uh, is cleaned off and dries, a lot of that's going to dull down. And here we go. Here is uh, the after part, and you can still see the line there. 
in the middle of the board uh, but where the conditioning stopped versus the original unconditioned board. So let's go ahead and finish conditioning the rest. And now looking over the Gibson fingerboard, I have actually already conditioned this uh, several months ago. So it does not need to be done again for the video. I'll just kind of move the strings aside and you can get a look. Really nice dark rosewood uh, cut uh, on this guitar. And let's take uh, one last look at the two guitars side by side at the tops. And, you know, at this angle, you can really notice the binding. Uh, different color on the Epiphone versus the Gibson. The Epiphone is uh, kind of a, a darker yellowed binding, uh, almost like they kind of went with, uh, wanted to have an aged look to it. Whereas on the Gibson, you just have the uh, plain white binding no yellowed to it at all all right and the weight epiphone coming in at nine pounds five ounces and the gibson nine pounds 15 ounces